Hello everyone, welcome to Shabbat Services. It sure is a nice day out there as I was coming from home. It was dark and gloomy and everything was all wet. And the closer I got, the brighter it got and the nicer it was here. And it's like God smiling down blessings on us. Well, let us get started with this. In um, these times of uncertainty that we're in, we have God's promises. We have God's hope that carries us through these things. The people in the world are really concerned because they don't know the truth of God. And um, they're thinking, oh, the rapture, it's coming for the rapture. And they're seeing, you know, um, Jesus can come back at any day now. I've heard that several times. We know better. We know Jesus won't come back any day soon, within years. Anyway, because um, we know that we haven't heard the two witnesses yet. They haven't started sacrificing in the temple, and they haven't done the abomination to stop the sacrifices. So, but our hope is the return of Jesus Christ. That's our purpose in life, to wait for the return of Jesus, to prepare for the return of Jesus, the preaching the gospel of the kingdom. So on a daily basis, we anticipate the return of Jesus Christ. Now, some of most, this is the old people today, most of us, if we have that memory, can remember the commercial for Heinz Ketchup. Anybody remember that one? Where they would sing anticipation and they would be holding the bottle, waiting for the ketchup to come out. But because the bottle neck got smaller and the ketchup was thick, it would kind of clog up. Well, I would stand there and beat on it. I'm sure some of you did too. <laughs> beat on it and I, I found a technique that did really work without making a big, big mess, was to stick the back side of the fork or a knife in there and give it around and it came back out. So this is what we're supposed to be doing, anticipating the return of Jesus Christ. For at this time, we must be preparing for the return of Jesus. We can't just sit back and say, well, it's coming, I'm okay, you're okay. We have to be preparing for the return of Jesus Christ. And um, now with this pandemic, we have a lot of stay at home time. A lot of people don't have to drive to work, they stay at home. So I know in my last shop I was at, I was about 40, somewhere around 40 minutes each way. So now if I were to stay at home, which is, but I'm closer, um, that's an hour and a half that I don't have to drive or none of us have to, whatever it is. Um, how much of that extra time are you giving to God every day? Are you giving him any more because you have more or are you doing other things with it? I'm here to try and encourage all of us, especially myself, that we got to give more of ourselves to God, to this blessing he's given us with this time off. Now, here's one. I have a friend who told me once, a, a church member, told me I'm losing my memory. I don't remember things anymore. And all of a sudden that hit me and it's like, oh yeah, I know what you mean. And this person told me, I do my Bible study in the morning and the evening, I don't remember really what I read or anything. And this person was obviously concerned. So this person counseled with a minister and the minister told this person, God knows, God sees us every day, every minute of the day. He sees us when we get up, 
we start studying his word. He knows if we're hungering and thirsting for his word, and that brings him pleasure. And he knows that as we age and through the fall of man, we're going to start losing some of our faculties. I don't know. But for this person to say, oh, I don't, but when that minister told this person, God knows you're doing what he wants you to do. Now, scriptures will tell us, don't worry about when they bring you up against the government and they want you to testify or whatever. He said, don't worry about what you say. The Holy Spirit will tell you what to say. It'll come out. So if you don't remember what you studied, but you're still doing it because you love God and you want to hear this, you're doing the right thing and God is well pleased and he will take care of you. Now, here's a... Um, um, Suggesting not only should we pray the, the prayer list for the brothers and sisters and friends and families that need our attention, needs God intervention, we should uh, take the church phone directory and we should pray that. One or two names, depending on how much time you're spending, Pray for each of the people in here. We all need each other's prayers very badly. For um, us to just say, I'm going to use this guy as an example. Oh, Tim, he needs this. He needs that. Who else can I use? <laughs> but anyway, if we each take and, and pray for each other, and God hears these prayers, and it's that sweet aroma to God and Jesus that we're sending up and that the angels are bringing to him as an offering from us. And here, we know that approximately the, the two witnesses will be 1260 days before the return of Jesus. And that means that we'll have lived approximately 1260 days somewhere. We're not sure where we're going to be for that first 1260 days. And we're praying that it's in the place of safety, but we haven't heard much of that. Like as in the old worldwide church of God, we heard plenty of the place of safety. Every other week we were being told, and we're going to the place of safety. And um, it's really something how God had says, or Jesus said, no one knows except for God the Father the day he's going to return. And I remember so many times, and I still do listen to the World Tomorrow programs and Mr. Armstrong, and he had said so many times, it, within the next two or three years, it's all going to be over. We'll be in the place of safety. Now, we can't set dates, which he always emphasized. We can't set dates, but within the next two or three years. Well, according to 1970, that was 50 years ago. He was telling us within the next two or three years. It's like, I wonder what he would think if he got brought back to life now and says, oh, this is 2020 and we're still here. But anyway, <laughs> that's not important. The important part is that we are here. So I would like to encourage everyone and I carried this book up here for a reason. For my final scripture, I love saying it. For my final scripture, I would like everyone to turn to 1 Corinthians, I sure hope that's the right one, 3, 12 through 15. If anyone builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, their work will be shown for what it is, because the day will bring it to light. It will be re re revealed with fire, and fire will test the quality of each person's work. 
If what has been built survives, the builder will receive a reward. Now here's the part I would like to encourage everyone to avoid. If it is burned up, the builder will suffer loss, but yet will be saved, even though only as one escaping through the flames. Now, if I, I can encourage everyone to do a little more praying, a little more Bible study, that you won't have to be saved through the flames. You'll be worthy to escape the flames. But if you're going to just be casual about it, you might have to suffer through the flames.